I just thought I'd show you people a little bit of the food I'm cooking. It's day number 19 now of my Corona diary. I'm cooking up that food for the two people that I'm with. Mm -hmm. My partner Sarah and my son Sage. Very lucky I was able to go and do a shop a couple of days ago. And there's food in the supermarkets. So while those people out there panic buying, please stop. It's an interesting experience in the supermarkets now because you have to all stand two metres apart with your trolley or your basket before you go in, sit there in the car park to try and have a limited number of people in the supermarket and make sure people are respecting social distancing, which after all seems to be what this is all about at the moment. So how has my day been? Mm, it's been pretty good actually. I've been outside in our lovely sunny garden and I've been uh, digging up some uh, patches of earth to turn into a veggie patch, something I'm not normally able to do in the summer because I'm so busy racing around, going to all these summer festivals that I work at as the man from Story Mountain with my big painted teepee, entertaining folks and bringing you beautiful spirit energy stories. Have a little look at this here. We're in my uh, stock room now where I keep all my books, lots of boxes of books come in and out of this room. Uh, people buy them and I love selling my books on. You know, here we go right now. We've got all these different uh, earth trays here. Some earth trays, different veggie seeds. And uh, if you have a look out here, I'll just give you a little wander around my garden. You will see some things of beauty, some lovely plants, a bit of chaos, a bit of garden tools and here is the earth that we've been digging up and preparing. The whole of South London is a huge bank of clay so there's an awful lot of clay underneath this soil so the more we churn it over the better off it will be for growing. We're putting some work and time into that which normally we wouldn't be able to do. I don't want to paint too positive a picture. It is about being positive but we're aware of all those people who are ill Right now, a lot of people dying, huge numbers, hundreds and hundreds every day. And uh, give them our honour, give them our respect and give them our energy as well. Also in our own personal lives, you know, there's a lot of sad stories going on right now just in my family. Uh, and I'm sure you could share the same if you wanted to on this YouTube channel of mine. You'd be welcome to post me some of your own family stories you know I don't want to come across as it's all too positive but I don't see the purpose of this uh, daily diary to make people more miserable and share my troubles with you I see it as a chance to motivate people those of you who need some motivation the stories in my family well there's my beautiful son Sage who has just uh, finished his master's degree it's a lot of work a master's degree he went off to Thailand and did a few months of travelling around and came back and took a couple of months to get himself active and finally got himself three different jobs here in London all working in hospitality, which was his, his life goal, his life dream and where he studied his master's degree, business and specifically festivals and pubs and hospitality venues and you know what, he had three jobs just lined up. He'd done one for a week, he'd done one for a couple of days and the third one he turned up to and they sent him home on his first shift because corona panic had just kicked in. So he's finding it hard to stay motivated, having just built up his dream and suddenly boom, boom. What he thought he was doing can't do anymore. There's my beautiful daughter Tamsin who spent a whole year studying to be an English teacher. English is a foreign language and she flew over to Spain and she did one week of shadowing in a school that was going to employ her and she was just about to do her first week of real teaching, very excited, kind of nervous to have moved countries and she'd also found herself a beautiful apartment that she'd fallen in love with and the very day that she was going to sign both her work contract in the school and her lease for the apartment, Spain closed all the schools and she had to do a mad dash home with her mum Rebecca from Spain uh, paying hugely inflated prices for airfares they didn't think they needed but if they hadn't flown back at that moment in time they would have got stuck there. There's my daughter Iris who 
is stuck in Exeter on her own now with my seven-year-old grandson. In fact, that was the last trip I did before lockdown, before we knew lockdown was coming. I mean, didn't it hit us all like a bloody tsunami, right? We didn't see it coming and bang, it came. Well, my last trip away from London was to go down to Exeter and see my lovely grandson and see my daughter Iris and she's just studying uh, English literature at university, probably to be a teacher, but we'll see. Of course, that's all closed down. So there's three people already with their dreams kind of stood on, trashed, beaten around by a big heavy boot. And uh, then, of course, last but never least, my other daughter, Maya, who was self-employed and been with her partner for some years and has found out she's pregnant and she's going to give birth early July and, you know, I've been very involved as a father. I've lived here in England to bring up my kids and give them lots of experiences and try and support them the best I can, and give them a positive view of the world and prime them and ready them to take and spread their wings and fly into life and... Is Maya pregnant and suddenly I can't even see her until probably after a baby's born and that's a big challenge for her. She was wanting to have a hospital birth. All my four kids um, were born at home. Her mum, Rebecca, was one at home birth, so I think any woman should be allowed to make that choice herself because of the circumstances as they were and the midwife not turning up to the first home birth, the birth of my son, who's our oldest child. I got so into the whole idea of reading about childbirth and prenatal and postnatal issues that I was able to be the midwife myself and uh, having been the unexpected midwife for my son Sage I was also then went on to be midwife for my second child my daughter Iris and then subsequently our twins and that's a very special thing for any father to be able to say and to not be able to engage at all with my beautiful Maya my daughter who's pregnant right now during this special special time knowing that in July she's going to have a child and after that everything changes this is a special time to connect with her and you can only do it over the phone you know so wow did you hear those four stories I just told you did you hear about those four young people and what they're having to put up with and those of us who are older, you know, hopefully you've lived your life. And if you haven't, let this be a reminder to you, my friends, that the most common regret that's stated by old people in their old folks' homes is they didn't live their lives, they didn't follow their dreams. Well, I can't possibly say that. I followed my dreams. I've been an eco-warrior. I've written, is it seven books? I've lost count. I've been storytelling at festivals all over the place. And... Now, you know, I'm working as a magazine editor and doing great work in my community to invigorate people's lives and get them more empowered. And I also had four days a week, my after-school club, storytelling and adventure clubs and some great little schools here in London, nice, stable, self-employed work. Of course, the schools are closed, so almost half my income is gone. We've all got a lot of reasons to complain, but here I am planting vegetables in my garden and making a corona diary and it breaks my heart more than anything how this whole corona crisis is stamped on the dreams of all four of my children I'm very very proud of them I'm such a proud father how they're all coping but I haven't let go of the reins I'll be a dad until the day I lose my breath and I'm gone I love my children so much and it breaks my heart to see what they're going through but we have to be strong we need to be strong, we need to be creative, we need to be the best that we can be. We've got no excuse to be anything else. Was it Nelson Mandela, I think, once said, oh, it's easy to just say, oh, I can't. It's easy to be a victim. What's hard, what takes courage is to actually shine. Well, you shine your light right now, people. You're going to have to shine your light and try and remember the lessons of Corona. Remember right now, Every type of species except for humanity is celebrating a cleaner earth, fresher air, more stars in the sky, cleaner flowing rivers. The animals are having a ball. They absolutely love this. They don't understand it, but they will be feeling the freshness of the earth around them. And this is one thing we have to learn. It might just be that corona, though it seems a curse that's locking us all down, maybe it's the thing that actually is going to save humanity. 
It might upset some people saying that, especially those who are losing loved ones and I might catch corona. I might have already had corona. There's no testing kits here in England, so nobody knows. The Queen of England is making a speech tomorrow, live speech, not just to England, but to all of the Commonwealth. What's she going to say? Who knows? It's challenging times. We might face further lockdowns because some fools are still running around living life like normal. All the bars and pubs are closed, but they still want to wander around, go to the parks, all sit by each other, go and have parties at their mates' places. And because of that, we'll all be locked down for longer. Do the right thing. Stay at home. Be creative. Be imaginative. Shine, like Nelson Mandela said. Dare to shine. Look after your loved ones. We've all got our stories of heartbreak. I decided to share some difficult stories with you right now of how it's impacted on my family. My income halved. All four of my kids stopped in their tracks. Young people who are creating their lives and working hard towards empowering themselves and living a worthwhile path. And that's all been stopped. So if you're old enough to be too old to die young, which I certainly count myself as. Hmm. You shine. You be an elder. And if you're young, I take my hat off to you. I give you my prayers. I give you my blessing. We're all in this together. Don't forget, people, right now, while you're watching those TVs and you're seeing the horrific figures of the thousands, well, hundreds into thousands of people dying, right now, the actual death rate for corona, for example, here in the UK, is less than 10% of a bad year of flu. So what's it all about? Is there another agenda? Who knows? I don't have enough pieces of the puzzle to give you any answers to that. There's all sorts of conspiracy theories going on. I think maybe there's a lot more to this than we can actually see because we're only given pieces of the puzzle by media as a journalist myself, as an editor-in-chief myself of a tiny little magazine, I'm shocked at some of the ignorance of other journalists whose research really isn't up to scratch and they're there on the tellies feeding us crappy information and feeding us fear. Well, people, don't feed that fear into your hearts. Feed courage into your hearts. Be the best you can be. Love yourself and love the people around you and love the fact that the earth is getting stronger be compassionate and be wise every single one of you let's make the human race the best it can possibly be a ho to that